is the one it's hers. Hi guys, please. Hi guys, it's just my surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, family? How y'all doing? Y'all see the girls is up here with me today. I'm talking to you, Sasha. You know, Don't get put off the show. I will put Sasha you off the show. All right, so we about to do you know, this is daily toast. Uh, we're not doing Sasha Moss morning toast yet because I don't know how she's going to do. Shouts out to Will. Hey, everybody, say, say what's up to your Uncle Will. What's up, Will Brown? Hi, what's up, cousin? All right, we're about to do this toast. We're going to get it on. I just want to post some stuff up. We're going to do a little experimental thing today. I'm tr I'm about to start my uh, shows again because I got my... Up. We're going to do a little experimental thing today. I'm tr I'm about to start my uh, shows again because I got my... We're going to do a little experimental thing today. I'm, tr I'm about to start my... Okay. So All right. So, uh, as y'all can see, I got my speaker... It's not just so we're going to start, I'm going to start my shows again because that's one of the reasons I had to stop the show. So people going to be able to call in. You're going to be able to call oh, in. So people going to be able to call oh, in. another one. You're going to be able to call oh, in. So people going to be able to call oh, in. another one. Go call in. You're going to be able to call in. So people going to be able to call oh, in. another one. Go call in. You're going to be able to call in. All right. So hopefully it posted up. So y'all got it scared, it popped up, cool, also, um, in Goofy Sabotage, uh, so uh, here we go. So y'all got it scared, it popped up, cool, also, um, in Goofy Sabotage, uh, so here we go. So y'all got it scared, it popped up. Guys, it's crazy. Hey, like, it's crazy. 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 Like, Hold on. Hold on. There we go. It's off. Y'all straight now? Yeah. All right, cool. We're about to do our toast. Um, Hold on, yeah. Khalif Judge. What's up, brother? What's up, Khalif? Um, did Will say something? All right, Will Brown, I'm going to invite y'all in. I don't know what's going on with this invite thing. Nobody still ain't been able to explain it to me, so I'm going to just invite. I'm going to keep on inviting fam. All right, so we're about to do this toast. You know, I got my ladies with me today. Huh? And all we start with bring it out, bring it out. Ah, uh, yes, right. We gonna bring it out, 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 bring them out, bring them out. I want you to use that. All right, stop. All right, so now we are about to do our libations. We first, but y'all know the rules. We gotta do our water first. All right, so let me pour the girls' water. They're gonna use this. All right, well, come on, pour it. Let's go. No, you're not getting. That's mine. And do You and Sasha got your own water. Hold my water, Dad. I won't drink all of it. All right, let's drink. Everybody get your water, get your water, get your water. I got how much you got, Daddy. Now, for those that want to join the conversation, right, I got, I got it up. Now you call in at 614-556-4444. Four, five, three, five. I want to see how it works. Um, just to check it out. Uh, go and drink your water, Sasha. Mind your business. Drink your water. Uh, settings. Let me see. I didn't like my daddy, and we had the same. Me and my daddy had the same size of the belly. Like that's crazy. Right. I don't know what she talking about. Yeah. Yep. It's uh six one four. Five five six four five three five. So we can have a conversation. If y'all want to have a conversation, oh here we go, my conference info. Five five six four five three five six one four 
five five six four five three five. You drink your water? Drink your water. That's eight ounces down for me. I'll give you a little bit. That's that spring water. You want some spring water sauce? You gotta finish your water. I'm on eight ounces. Y'all know I try to do 32 ounces. All right, go on, like, and share, because we about to really break it down. I got my books with me right now. Better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No peeking on the smoothie. I'm also <clears throat> experimenting with these broyolas, also known as gold root. So I'm going to sample these. Let y'all know how they doing. I ain't really feeling no substantial effects. No, you can't do no rodeo. Like you're too young. Yeah, too young. This is you don't. You shouldn't need no supplements at this point in time in your life. Please. What's in it? What's in it? Hmm. What's in it? It's called the golden rule. It's, it's like ginseng. It's stuff animals in it. You know what ginseng do? It's stuff uh, stuff in it. Good. It's stuff animals in there. They keep stuffing out. It's and not gonna have the water. Only the root water. Excuse me. That's all. All right, Jenny, you drink. You finish your water. Bring them out. Bring them out. All right, for those that's new, right? We always drink our water before we before we do our toast. Now, those of you that are new, y'all used to us pouring libations, but with this one we do toast, so we drink it in. All right. Drink it in. That's drink right. It in. Everybody, everybody on YouTube, on YouTube, uh, 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 uh,
Jeremiah Tappan, uh, John Fillard, uh, uh, Montague Pittman Air, Normal X, a pet mod rye. Elder Donaldson, Elder Harrison, Her Elder Farmer, Elder Millie Dixon, um, ch 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 Pastor Yusef Weston, um, ch 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 Tony Clark, um, uh, uh, Mark Walsh. Uh, that's all I can think of right now. We lift up our glass and we say, I say! From there we toast this morning. Christopher. Chris. Uncle Chris. Yeah, you did. We did have Uncle Chris too. All right, now we toast this moment. You're wasting the juice, baby. Put it up on the table if you can't handle it. All right. So today is Imani. I got my cheat sheet out. Imani. For those that don't know what Imani means, Imani is oh faith. Oh, my God. Can I tell them what we make for um, the wedding real bad? Um, we also toast. Today what? is the harmon um, The myotic principle is harmony. The M7 principle is trust. Um, the hermetic law is gender. Uh the day for the males born on the day is Quasi. For the females born on the day is Akusa. Yes, no. Right? So we toast this moment because in this moment is all our power. Lift up your glasses, lady, and we say, Ashe! From there we toast our children, our children's children, on to infinity. infinity. Right? So we toast our children. So we toast them in advance so they can toast us. So we toast them and we say, Ashe! Peace, power, and joy in 100 years. Right. Now we toast you. We want to toast you. We want to thank all of you for joining us for the toast. Those that's joining us now and those that's joining us later. Later, any if there's any issues that you have out there that you want us to toast, we lift up our glass for it and we say, Ashef! Last but not least, we wish you peace, power, power and joy in 100. And 100 years. And we say, Ashe. 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 Peace, power, 100 years. Go on, drink, ladies. I kind of like it. It's too strong. It's too strong for you? Too it's much ginger? for me. You like it? Too much ginger? All right, this is that lemon lime. We call it the Justice League Ambrosia. Man. I'm what sweating. Did you put in All there? right. He, I didn't That's see Ambrosia. That. I've never seen that much sweat before. Me. I'll see you at the door. Too... All right. So now what I'm about to do is make this smoothie. Anybody that want to join the conversation? Anybody that want to join the conversation? Call us at 614-556-4535. Once again, that's 614-556-4535. I'm experimenting right now to see if my new speaker is working. This is why I'm one of the reasons I had to stop my uh, my shows. The uh, Folk Tales for Grown Folks as well as... Um, Tribal quotes will be jumping off and starting again. All right, so let's get it started. I'm on. I'm about to make a smoothie. My daughters look like they're about to go outside, so it's just about to be us, huh? We're not going outside. Oh, y'all not going outside? So. Alright, so right now what I'm doing is making a smoothie. Ah, right, we're gonna pull out the book. Don't give me that. Let's get this discussion started, because I'm only doing one show today. We're not gonna I'm not gonna do the YouTube, I'm going I'm gonna post this up. On YouTube, so we could have a discussion because I want to see. Does anybody want to call in? I need somebody to call in. If not, I'm gonna make it happen anyway. Look good on it. Mm. So we took the ambrosia, we mixed it in. We got the lemon, lime, and ginger, and then we got the I other want fruit. This. You know what? This? I didn't even get to finish. You will finish it. Don't start that. Okay. Don't start that. I'm from two. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alright. Now she got more than me. Oh, hush. Alright, so, let me move the book so y'all can see Miss Gina G. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna take care of that, Gina G. You look like a robot. <laughs> Alright, so. Let me go. Is there ginger in here? Yeah. Oh, God. Everything's ginger. Why? So. I'm posting this up on Facebook right now. Hit us up. Let's talk. We're going to talk about a bunch of different subjects today. Okay. I don't want ginger. You don't want it? All right. What you about to do? Go outside? Yes. All Me right. Too. You go have a good time. Y'all have a good time. Okay. Y'all be safe, please. I'm you gonna play with your scooter? Yeah. Woo, got him out, y'all. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Posted on Giami Journey too. Let's talk. Y'all call in. We about to jump it off. Uh. All right, let's go. Huh? It's taping. Your car, okay. You sure I ain't give it to you? Oh, yeah, here you go. Here. Alright. Let me open the lines. Phone lines are open. See how it works. You are the first participant on the call. Please hold while we wait for the others to join. All right, fam. Those that want to join the call, you can hit me up at 614-556-4535. We're about to have a discussion. Now, first off, first off, I want to thank all those that's been taking the time to join us for the Nguza Cyber Challenge, the 21-day Nguza Cyber Challenge, right? process that you can simply use to help change your life, help you lose weight, help you conquer some habits, help you develop some positive some positive habits. But also before I get into it, I also want to talk about the workshop that will be coming to Columbus on August the 11th. August of the 11th, we have the Aya Education Institute, Brother Wakesa will be coming to town and he will be doing a, a workshop called Injected Racial Scripts and he will be helping people figure out how to change their life story. Right? So now, I also need to announce that we are moving into the Comedic New Year so I think the uh, celebration will be starting this week. I think it's going to be starting, well, this week or next week. So um, there's going to be a lot of celebrations, a lot of workshops, a lot of stuff going on as far as the Comedic New Year. I'm really looking forward to it because this is going to be my first time really being involved. Um, but there's a lot of information that, that I want to kind of cover with y'all today because I'm, I'm experimenting with this. So if anybody want to call in at 614-556-4535, my lines are back open. I got my speaker back, so now I can do my show. So we're going to start doing folk tales for grown folks. Once again, we're going to start doing tribal quotes. Um, so some of the new information that I've been running across, right? So one of the books that I'm checking out right now is called The Emperor's Handbook. Oh! Now, we're going to get to this in a second. Emperor's Handbook. Now, this is uh, Marcus Aurelius by Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius. Or whatever he was an emperor of Rome, right? And his brother kept notes why he was ruling, right? Very, very powerful piece, right? Now another book that I'm looking at right now is called Natural Born Heroes. I see Yolanda Carter out there. I see Deanna Johnson out there. Yolanda, you might want to check this book out because they talk a little bit about parkour. 
and about some of the roots of parkour. And they also talk about fashion, which is you you might want to really, really check this book out, right? Then we got once again another book that I've been working with. It's called Hero with a Thousand Faces, which is by Joseph Campbell. Another book that I'm looking at right now is The Good Food Revolution, Growing Healthy Food, People, and Communities. I'm reading through that right now, right? A book I got yesterday, I just started reading it today. It's called New Self, New World. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. We also got The Nurturing Effect, How the Science of the Human Behavior Can Improve Our Lives and Our World, and also... One about the microbiome, natural defense, enlisting bugs and germs to protect health, food, and health. Now, I know y'all be like, Brother Hot Tim, that's a lot of, a lot of separate information. That's a lot of information that you got right there that you're going through. How do you make all this make sense, right? What does Marcus Aurelius have to do with growing your own food? What does growing your own food got to do with heroes? You know what I'm saying? What does that have to do with developing a new self? What does that have to do with nurturing, Brother High Tim? What does that have to do with the microbiome? What do all these things have to do with each other? Why are you reading all this information? Now, first off, one of the things that I'm always constantly talking about is culture. I'm always talking about developing and building culture, right? How do you build and develop a culture, right? How do you do that? How do you resurrect a culture? You know what I'm saying? Especially when you have a people that have been broken. You have a people who basically don't know who they are, that's grasping on to any information that come their way, actually actually in denial of any information that come their way, and grasping on to the wrong things almost all the time. How do you develop a culture when you got a group of people that's doing things like this? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's grasping the wrong stuff. You know what I'm saying? I have to constantly be looking into different information, constantly pulling stuff, right? So yesterday, I'm reading through this whole nurturing effect, the nurture, the nurture effect, right? How science of human behavior can improve our lives and our world. And I'm checking this out because at the um, at a place that I'm working, I got to figure out how. Do we change some behaviors of, of some of the young people that I'm constantly working with? Not only now, so because now when I'm at when I'm working in the school, one of the things I'm constantly aware of is that I'm not just working at the school. Deanna Johnson says, can't get a good connection. Blessing for you. A uh can't get the rest of that. Alright. So I'm looking at this book, The Nurturing Effect, and I'm going through, and one of the things that they talk about is nurturing environments. They say that nurturing environments are essential to help young people grow into healthy adults, nurturing environments, and I have to honestly think, and I got to ask the question, right, right, I got to ask the question, are we, are we creating nurturing environments for our children? Right? Are we creating nurturing environments for ourselves? Right? How do you? I mean, because nurturing environments are cultural, or at least they're supposed to be cultural. But what we're starting, to, what I'm starting to figure out is that we ain't, we have not been able to create nurturing environments because we have taught, been taught that nurturing environments are healthy. They're not safe for us. Right? So we kind of, we we make we we create aggressive environments. Right, and we expect our kids to be able to adjust to aggressive situations, right? So they talk about promoting and reinforcing pro-social behavior, minimizing socially and biologic toxic condition, monitoring and setting limits on influence and opportunities to engage in problem behavior, promoting the mindful, flexible, and pragmatic pursuit of pro-social values, teach, promote, and richly reinforce pro-social um, sociality. Right. And we're not providing environments that allow our children to grow up healthy. We're not doing it at this point in time in, in where we are. We're, we're not we're not promoting. We're not teaching our children. We're not giving them places where they can be nurtured. 
right? So I'm sitting in the school and I'm getting kids coming in who aren't being nurtured at home. And I have to find a way to try to change their behavior. How the hell, how the hell do we do this? Right? Because I know I'm not the only one in the school system. I'm not the only one that's dealing with young people who are coming up in violent situations, in unnurturing environments, and then being placed in school and being told that they have to be able to act right. Now, they done broke it down to where they could tell you how many issues you're going to have in, in how many minutes. They broke it down. They said in, um, in some of these studies, they were able to show that kids that come from um, unnurturing environments will get into arguments and fights every six minutes. Right? I mean, they done broke it, they done broke it down to the science. Um, the results were disastrous at school. The aggressive children were uncooperative with the teachers and therefore did not learn as much. They were irritating to other children who then avoided them. So they learned fewer of the social graces that emerge in a normal course of interaction with others. When aggressive kids in Patterson studies reached middle school, they were falling behind in academics and had few friends. Due to the conflict at home, their parents had given up trying to monitor what they did or set limits on their activities. So they were free to roam the neighborhoods with other aggressive, rejected kids. I mean, this sounds just like some of the, this sounds like the kids that I'm dealing with, right? So, so I'm sitting up here like, damn, how, how do we, how do we develop nurturing environments, right? How do we, because I was always taught that you shouldn't reward somebody for doing what they're supposed to do, right? I mean, really, because a lot of a, a lot of the stuff that I believe that um, people were doing, right, um, was like bribing the children, bribing people. But then when you look at it, you know what I'm saying? When we go to work, we expect a reward, right? We, we trade our time and we get rewarded with a paycheck. But yet, when it comes to us rewarding our kids for doing the things that they're supposed to do, like work, which is school, you know what I'm saying? When we want to give them rewards, we call it bribing them to do what, they, what, what they're what they supposed to do. But, you know, you you be mad if you didn't get your check right now. But now, there's a difference. There's, there's this thing called co coercion, right? And a lot of times, what our kids start noticing is... That they are being co coerced into doing things and it's not really a reward. So we have teachers, we have administrators, we have individuals that's working with young people who believe that they're rewarding our children, but what they're really doing, they're co coercing our children into situations and into doing things that they don't want to do. Right? Because they don't value it. How do you turn or how do you get a child? To value something that their parents don't value. Mainly education. Right? We got people giving lip service to education. We got people talking about how valuable education is. But really when it comes down to really working or moving towards education, they really don't value it. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's like far off. It's something, it's something that don't deal with reality right now. A lot of our kids are in situations right now where... Um, in a sense, education don't pay off right now, right? So how do we change this mindset? How do we start really working with these young people to change the mindset so that we can get them to really start valuing some of the things that, that, that will be necessary? Especially when they can look right now at the school system and see that in a sense, that it's not like what I'm going to school for really doesn't benefit me at this point in time. Is not really benefiting me at this time, right? So, one of the things that I needed to get into was how do you get people to change their values? How do you get people to start changing what they value, right? Um, looking at the world just a little bit different. And our ancestors used to set goals for themselves, um, 
for people within the culture by arranging the story or arranging the narrative, right? To guide the young people towards what the society needed. And the question I have to start asking is, what are the stories that our young people are receiving now? What are the stories that they're receiving? What are the heroes that they're looking towards, right? Because this, this, this is important, right? In our culture, we have always had heroes, right? And those heroes have always done certain things. But now we got to ask the question, who are the heroes in the culture? Who has set the culture? Who, who, who has set up the cultural heroes? And what is the end goal of the cultural heroes? Now, when I was working with young people a few years ago, um, I had I had a, I had a sad idea to write a, a story because a lot of young people that I worked with, and this was maybe about fifteen years ago, um, I was talking to a, a lot of the young men that that stayed in my house and and their friends, and and it was brought to my attention that many of them didn't even plan to live past twenty one. Now, I was working with a rough group at this time, right? And in a sense, their cultural their their cultural hero was the hustler. And I ain't talking about the type of hustle that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Those of you that's old enough to to, to really know about what I'm talking, the, the the hustler was their cultural hero. And the whole, this hustler never really lived past 21. And if he lived past 21, it was very rare that he moved into his 30s. Either he was dead or he was in prison. And all the young people that I had talked to had basically adjusted their lives and adjusted their mind state for this. So this is the hero that our children are looking towards. They're looking towards an individual that is a hustle. Now, let's look at what, what they was talking about as hustle. What they're talking about a parasitic individual, an individual that lived off of other people, that lived off the oppression of their own community. This what a whole generation of our young men and, and young women were looking towards as their hero, right? And these are the parents a lot of these people are the parents of the kids that are in the schools that are with me right now. Right? So the question I have to ask is, how do we reset the hero paradigm or change the story that our children are living towards? This is why I pull out the book, Natural Born Heroes, and Hero with a Thousand Faces. This is why I pulled out the book, by Marcus Aurelius, the uh, Marcus Aurelius, Aurelius, the Emperor's Handbook, right? Because I'm looking at wow, how has people, how have people historically set up the hero story, right? So now, one of the things, one of the favorite quotes from Joseph Campbell that that I always go back to, he said, "In order for the man to live, the boy must die, right? In order for the woman to live, the girl must die." And a lot of people get, get kind of freaked out about that when I say stuff like that, right? It's like, it's like in all societies, the hero always goes through certain phases, right? How do you set up these phases for young people? Because the hero sets up the, the hero is the prototype. The hero is the, um, what they call it? I guess prototype would be the best word. The hero sets up the phases that an individual go through. So in, in rites of passage, in the hero's journey, you have the call, the separation, the initiation, the reintroduction. Right? So when we look at the life of Buddha, when we look at the life of Jesus, when we look at the life of, of the hustler, even, when we look at the life of Hercules, when we look at the life of Heru, when we look at when we look at the, the life of Booker T. Washington, we look at the life of Marcus Garvey, we look at the life uh, of Malcolm X. When we start looking at these heroes, when we start looking at the life of Martin Luther King, we can see that at some point in time in their life there was a call, at some point in their life there was a separation, at some point in their life there was an initiation, at another point in their life there was a, a reintroduction, right? But I want you to see something that, that is critical when it comes to black folks and the heroes. Something very critical happens with black folks and the heroes because I want you to understand this. 
when you look at the hero of 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 black people right now in this day and time, I need you to close that door. When you look at the hero, especially in black stories, this is why I'm kind of hyped about this whole Black Panther piece coming out right now, right? But you know, that, that could go either way, right? When you look at a lot of the heroes and the hero stories for black people in this present time, our heroes always meet a certain death. Like, for example, you we could all get excited. Remember when Malcolm X came out? We could look at the story of Malcolm X. We knew how that shit ended. Right? We could look at the story of Nat Turner. We get excited about Birth of a Nation coming out. But we all knew how that story ended. Right? You know, and it's like, it's like when you look at traditional hero stories, the hero always dealt with that. The hero always died. But the hero was always able to be regenerated and brought back. Do you understand? Right? Because the, the, the hero is mythic. Right? So what they do is they strip black heroes of this mythic quality of being able to be resurrected and brought back. And it just ends. Right? So we got to be very careful when we're dealing with black heroes, especially when they're being given to us by our enemies. Your, your enemy could never give you a hero. Right? And I know a lot of y'all get offended when I use the term he, enemy. But we have to be very clear on what we're dealing with because in this society, this society is benefits from our failure. Right? So anybody that benefits from your failure, regardless of whether uh, how you want to look at it, that is your enemy. Right? This whole society is banking on the failure of black folks. It succeeds on the failure of black folks. Black folks is brought over here as a, a commodity. Right? Something that you are supposed to wring out every little inch of value from it. And the fact of the matter, and the fact of the matter is, this whole society is built on your failure, family. And until we realize that and really start dealing with the society in the way that the society can understand. Because politically, right, they feast on our defeats. Economically, they feast on our defeats. Socially, they feast on our defeats. And until we start making, right, and, and rewriting our stories, they're going to continue to be able to feast on our defeats. How do you change the story, right? It starts with the, it starts with us reaching the young people and start erecting heroes that they can start following heroes who end right is not necessarily predictable or who end we can determine you understand what I'm saying it's like when they created Hercules right they created Hercules as the baddest dude on the planet Hercules met his end but Hercules was resurrected as a constellation of stars and he was able to feast with the rest of the gods on Mount Olympus right Heru right when we Heru was was raised up in a rough situation he was able to battle through he was able to defeat and get his father's throne back right King Arthur right I mean, let's let's just let's just look at all these heroes. Let's look at these mythic heroes, right? And then we could compare them to the heroes that we have been given. You know what I'm saying? Well, yours just have an end. It's it's boom. It's done. It's not, no, no. We need to come up with other heroes. We need to come up with other. We need to make up other stories and make it bigger and better than just power. Because you know, of course, of course, it benefits them if the only way that we figure that we could come up. It's through um, um, an underground economy that's illegal and shit like that, right? Because, of course, if we program our kids, that's the only way they're going to make it. Then that's the only thing they're going to do. But then we always end up having to forfeit all of our fortune and all of, our, uh, at, um, all of the gains that we have made. We always end up having to give it back over to the society because we got it in an illegal fashion. Right. So we got to be able to erect stories that can guide our young people to a point to where they could feel 
success in whatever they do, right? Where they can see that there's other avenues of success. See, because understand this, until Hercules, West Asians thought that they could only, it was only so far that they could go in the world. But Hercules extended the map for them. You know what I'm saying? Alexander the Great or Alexander the Macedonian extended the map of where they could go. Right? Through his mythic deeds. Now, who's extending the map for us? Who's extending where we can go and what we can do? On a mythic level. So that we could be telling our kids these stories. Right? So now one of the things I picked up from Marcus Aurelius was a quote that he got from um, um, an oracle. For those that don't know, an oracle is, is basically something that predicts the future. So he said, I thank the gods that when I became interested in philosophy, I did not fall into the hands of a sophist. Or throw away my time reading fictive histories, sifting through obscure arguments, or grazing or gazing in at the stars. All these good things came from the hand of the gods and with the help of fortune. Right? And one of the quotes that he got from one of the oracles says, It's up to you. Where does it where is it? I gotta find where they where they say that at. It says, It's up to you. Thanks to gods, whenever I felt like helping, uh, boom, I must thank the God, like boom, 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 boom. Oh, here you go. Specifically, I am in the God's debt for the dreams that cured me from coughing up blood and from vertigo. And for the guidance of the oracle at, at Sayata, it's up to you. So when he went to an oracle, when somebody sent for him to get... To, for somebody to give him a prophecy, the prophecy that came to him said it's up to you, right? Now, my question is, my question is, what, what wise words are we passing on to our young folk? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, I mean, we had a young boy who was, I mean, I don't even know if he was in a royal family. I mean, he was adopted into a royal family. Right, and he was a, a a a sickly little boy, right? And somebody sent out for an oracle for him, and basically what the oracle told him was, "It's up to you," right? Oracles are basically based on mythic. You know what I'm saying? On, on it's 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 a it's it's a mythic thing. It's not it's not even real. But with the words that were that that was spoken to him was something that helped him move through life. Right. So basically, family, I am trying to come up with a narrative for the young people, for the adults that I work with through the Inclusive Cyber Challenge, trying to come up with different ways of being able to help them to create this story. Right. Find their heroes. And in, and, and in some cases, helping create new heroes. Right, because some of y'all out here on Facebook, man, y'all are very creative, man. But y'all need to be use some of the creativity to create some of these heroes that our kids need. All right, so now I'm just experimenting with this thing, man. Somebody hit me up at six one four five five six four five three five. I want to see if the line is working. Woo, that's good. All right, all right. So nobody gonna call. Thank you for joining me for the Toast Facebook. I'm out.